There was a baseball uniform and some miscellaneous other things, like notebooks, pencils, papers. There was also a shoe pouch. As for the bat, it wasn't here. Oh my god, that's even worse. It was how I left it when I took the bat out. There was no doubt. Yesterday really happened. Now that I knew I wasn't a lunatic, I felt relieved. At the same time, if I wasn't the crazy one, then... Hinamazawa was... And that was evidence of reality I found just as difficult to accept. There was noise, somehow, creeping to everything I saw. And the world was losing a tiny bit of color. So, what did I know about last night now? Now that I made sure the bat wasn't there, I didn't need to be here anymore. Shall I go? For real? To the hospital? Uh, have fun in your walk there, Bob. Uh, thinking if you're insane or not. It was my first time going to the hospital. From what I heard, it wasn't far from school. My mom told me where it was. A big, easy-to-see road went straight there. I went past the shopping street. Made a turn. It wasn't overly hard to spot the sign with the IRE clinic written on it. Yeah, he definitely, like, works here, though. We're gonna see him again, though. There was one other person. An older man. There in the air-conditioned waiting room. Are we gonna see Coach? I went to the counter and told him it was my first time here. The man behind the counter glanced at the clock and said there would be a short wait. It was almost five. Clinic hours would be ending soon. I sat in this unfamiliar waiting room, isolated from everyone, let myself feel the cool air. I actually felt relieved. I don't. I don't even know what I would do in this situation. If I was so sure I killed someone, yet I'm, uh, there was evidence that I did the fact, but everyone else, like, made it so that I'm, uh, made it sound like so that I'm, uh, nothing had changed at all. By that same logic, that means that I'm, uh, either Sadako's probably gone crazy or I'm, uh, something is happening at home that's making her believe that her uncle is still acting the same. It was her same old uncle, and no one thinks anything different has happened so far. I have no idea how to take any of this. Oh god, see another thing of, like, Keiichi, like, actually, like, if there's evidence backing up his dream, but he felt like he didn't kill- he didn't actually kill anyone at all, honestly. That's even worse, honestly. What should I tell the doctor when he comes? I could tell him I had a cold, but I was the very picture of health. Actually, I wanted him to check my head. I wanted someone to confirm for me whether I was actually sane or not. Keiichi, my barasan? Please come to the examination room. Huh? The voice on the side of the examination curtain. I thought I heard it somewhere before. Hi. You work part time, also a professional outfit. Nice. <laughs> Yellow seems to be like the, the the thematic, like just the theme color for this entire chapter so far, huh? <laughs> the theme color. But red pencil. There's a red pencil. There's a red pen in there. Hello. This is the first time we've seen each other here. Coach. Coach, you, you were a doctor. I didn't mention it. He didn't seem to know his way around when he was looking at my shoulder in the nurse's office. It wouldn't make sense if he was actually a doctor. And if he's a coach, then he knows how to treat injuries and anything like that. Come to think of it, our teacher called him Iris Sensei, didn't she? Didn't she? Well, yes, I'm more or less a doctor here. Doctors are really good, you know? You get to see and touch all that. Yeah, okay, stop. Stop. Fucking stop already. I, I, I hope you never would have brought this up ever again. Thank you very much. No. Just seeing that made my cold go away. I'll be leaving now. Thank you. Polite bow. Whoa, wait, wait. My bear is on. A joke. It was a joke. That's a terrible joke. Come. Come sit down and let me take a look at you. I need to use my, my stethoscope to show me your silk. Uh, no. For some reason, I felt really relieved. I didn't say nice. As much as I thought everything had gone crazy, Coach is here doing the same thing he always did. I was very happy for that. In a weird way. Hmm. You don't seem to have a cold. Actually, those scrapes and cuts all over you seem to be the, being the painful thing. Don't tell me you're playing the bushes with short sleeves and shorts. 
I mean, I can't say for sure you haven't been infected with tinnitus. So chasing that man last night, I kept being scraped by bits of trees. Oh, so your wounds definitely are also a piece of evidence that I know. Didn't realize I had so many cuts. You went a little too crazy the festival yesterday, huh? Enjoy that while you're young. And once again, I apparently went to the festival. Coach, did you go too? To the festival? Yes. Of course I did. I may be a doctor, but I'm also in the Wakanashi Executive Committee. Did you see me there? This coach is the same coach i always known. I feel like I could trust him more than my weird friends, so I asked. Yes, the, your friends have been upgraded to the weirdos. Yes, yes. Well, except for two. So far. But so far, this is the third chapter, and like this is Sonico's chapter, and I'm, uh, besides, I'm, uh, her, honestly, I'm, uh, emotional heel turn, it makes sense. It makes sense why she's, like, like that. Oh, God, and I feel bad for even more than if, like, this honestly is a whole giant fucking curse, and no matter what, she's always meant to be cursed, no matter what. Well, always someone close to her, but never her. Well, actually, I actually was drinking the main tent with the chairman and the others the whole time. I didn't go out to see the festival at all. I don't think I saw you. Oh. That was a strange question. Perhaps you didn't sleep well last night? You can't do that. You have to sleep and eat well to grow up fine. The nightmares will probably not do the same. Especially if you see something um, uh, traumatic. <laughs> Coach let out a laugh. He didn't laugh in a natural way like me on Reina did. Coach was okay. He was the coach in the world I knew. He wasn't someone from this abnormal world. Well, this all might seem a little weird to you, but... I want you to hear me out without laughing. Confess to the murder. Right here. Right now. Yes, go ahead. I greatly welcome any shy, bashful worries you might have had to come to puberty. No. Could it be possible I have an identical twin? <laughs> coach expected that question at all. I couldn't say anything for a moment. Then he smiled calmly and quietly answered. This is superstition. I've heard, people, I've heard before that everyone has two other people in the world who look just like them. There technically are people like that. If there was, I'd certainly have to meet them, though. Also, there are plenty of fairy tales where a person's double appears. The different ones about doppelgangers are probably the most famous. Doppelgangers? Oh, well, they're learning about all this now. Okay. We're going to learn all about the mythology, the lore of, of spiritual doubles. The curse is expanding its reach to other countries and taking him, taking him to here. Yes, they look exactly like another person. Apparently, they har herald misfortune. You meet one, you're going to die soon. I think that's how it went. When you meet them, you're sure to die soon. Well, you didn't meet them in person, but spiritually, when they're walking behind you, then I'm a... Uh, Wow, that was always going to happen then. <laughs> the story ended directly in death, plain and simple. made my spine tingle. Coach isn't saying it to scare me, though. He was just offering a casual anecdote that made it feel all the more real. Have you ever heard of those of one of those things showing up in Hanamazawa? What? <laughs> well, I can't say that I have. <laughs> Coach must have thought he was being teased, so he laughed in an exaggerated way. But when he didn't smile along with him, his laughter suddenly grew fainter. I think we're doing a, psych a schizophrenic patient here, er, nurse. <laughs> I'm sorry, well, I was sort of being serious. No, I apologize for laughing. Was there something you were worried about? I wonder if I should tell him. Then I had to resolve myself one final time, I finally spoke. I didn't go to the festival yesterday. Is that right? Well, there will be one next year. Then you can... That's not what I meant. I didn't go to the festival, but according to everyone else, I was there. Could that even be possible? After blinking his eyes at amazement, Coach thought seriously about what I was trying to say. Hmm. Also trying to think now, I'm, uh, maybe, like, I'm just throwing any idea out of my head just to think about, um, uh, what was it, um, uh, there's no choice, and like, the only thing that changed the second chapter happening was really just meeting Xion and all that, and like, her being like influencing Kate Sean to like, um, uh, 
just go to the storehouse. No, that would change everything to the... All the way further on. Hmm. There's nothing like that happening that happened in this chapter. Especially since the uncle just appeared out of nowhere. Like, like literally just that body appearing in another town over as someone killing that woman. Of Ama, who was Ama Tepe's mistress. And that was something completely something else is happening regardless of anything happening in this town at all. Literally. At all in this town. Honestly. I just don't know how to think about it or feel about any of this. I don't know what to say or do. There's absolutely, like, again, like, out of anything, like, Ama, there's nothing to add. <laughs> because, like, literally, there's, n there's nothing... There's nothing else to consider. Either ghosts, doppelgangers, or literally just everyone's collectively going insane. And again, like the story is doing everything in its power to make it seem like it's either literally everything that's already been like set up, like in like the very first half of the like the first installment. Then I'm uh, there's a dam construction project. I'm uh, there's a Yaku there's a Yakuza group that maybe like that's practically the reason of why there's all the people going missing. But some people died from accidents. Some people died obviously from foul play. Some people died from uh, things which I'm uh. Even the police don't even know what the fuck happened. There's medicine. There's a, a syringe of stuff which even the police don't even know what it is. Even under tight scrutiny. They don't even know it's diabetic medicine. They don't even know what's in the syringe. Almost everyone in the entire exactly game like has it. Let me know of. Mion definitely has it. Or at least Rena has access to it. Brika does. And she's so far not have any kind of heel, t heel, heel face turn. The closest one we had to her was the latest in the second chapter. It was in the second installment. I was really just talking about cats and dogs and all that. But I'm, uh, it's only raining cats and dogs this time, so I'm, uh, it, it must have been foreshadowing, right? Right? No, it definitely wasn't. My god. <sighs> and he answered, choosing his words carefully. Let me make sure I have this straight. My Barakun, you went to the Wantaganashi Festival, but don't remember it. Am I right? I was trying to say something completely different. I suppose any sane person would come to that conclusion. That night, Kichi My Bear was actually the festival, but I was saying I didn't go. Obviously, my memories of going there had failed me. That was absolutely impossible. A vivid act I committed during the downpour couldn't possibly have been an illusion. So I might just go along with it and just say, I'm, uh, no, I wasn't there at all. Like, or that, or just I might just say, like, maybe? I just don't remember any of it. All these scrapes in my body prove it. As is the fact that Bat was in the locker. No, that's not it, Coach. I really didn't go to the festival. Is the next thing you're gonna do, like, actually go to Ma uh, Sadako's house to see if Ma uh, Ninko's still alive? That's honestly probably the one deciding factor here as well. <laughs> Holy shit. Please, uh, please don't take offense, my Barasan. Have you ever had an experience where you where you were suddenly somewhere unfamiliar? You couldn't remember why? No. I didn't lose my memories or anything. Because while the festival was going on, I was definitely doing something else. It wasn't like I was asleep and unconscious or anything. Okay, you're definitely saying you weren't the festival at all. You were certain you were doing something else. I know I'm being awfully rude, but are you sure you're not mistaken? I know I'm not. My memories are clear as day and they were real. During the festival, you weren't the shrine, you were doing something somewhere else. Can you pr definitely prove that? Um, that's right. Thinking it through brought me to this. There's only one way to prove that I wasn't at the festival yesterday. And that was the show there was no doubt I killed her uncle. Coach on each other in the answer. It's like a little, a little cold. Confess to the murder so you don't look like a crazy person here and now. Look like a different kind of crazy person. I guess they would. Draw from Coach's perspective. How just a weirdo sputtering nonsense. Would you like to lay down? Maybe you should relax and take it easy for a bit. Sorry, I didn't really come here to lay down. You seem to be a little worked up. Why don't I give you a sedative that'll let you sleep for a bit? That way, I'm not being strange. I was coach treating me like a deviant, so I raised my voice. <sighs> I apologize if I offended you. So please, calm down. I definitely didn't go to the festival. That's the truth. I understand. I understand, so please, calm down, take a deep breath. No, you don't understand at all! Coach is stunned and stares at stupef stupefaction. 
I do understand, my Barrison. You didn't go to the festival yesterday. Is that right? I believe you. I believe you. Coach jotted down a brief note on his records. Can I read that note for real, real quick? <laughs> he was writing in German. God damn it, never mind. <laughs> so his patient would know what it said. I can make a good guess of what he wrote. You won't believe me until I just tell you everything I was doing at the time, will you? No, I believe you. Please sit down. Before I, s I sat, I touched my head back a little. The blood in my face all drained down and I quieted down. Taking a deep breath, I made sure that I was calm now. It would have been possible for me to be at the festival. Because at the time, I was... Should I tell him? Or not? I really didn't want to go on living like this. Feeling this horrible. And I said them. The final fatal words. Because I was killing Sadako's uncle at the time. I could smell the concrete in the room. I could feel the air around it sharpen. Nobody moved. Not even the nurse there was secretly listening in the corner. <laughs> Only the sound of the clock ticking told us time hadn't stopped. With his mouth wide open, Coach even forgot to blink for a little while. You killed Sadako chan's uncle. Yeah. It's fine now, Keiichi Maibara. Well, at least, okay, my uh, thing I wanted of him, uh, someone getting away with the crime uh, is not going to come to fruition then, okay. <laughs> Don't hesitate. Admit it. With all your strength. Yes. Last night, I did it. I killed him. I spoke clearly and fluidly. I could easily tell that Coach's mind had gone completely blank. Why would you... No. That was a foolish question. I believe it was the most direct method of saving Sadako, so I carried it out. I don't have any regrets. I... I see. <laughs> Coach smiled thinly and nodded a bit. So I couldn't have been in the festival. I left the brightness of my house for the darkness of the outside. To that, I dug holes, made phone calls, I had my hands full. And then I attacked him. I killed him. And buried him. It was pouring hard at the time. I feel like this is going down an entire path of, like, you just confessing to uh, even the police that I'm, uh, the uncle's dead. Oh boy. That you killed him. And absolutely everything is all in order still besides that. How is the- how is the next year gonna end like that all throughout? Oh god. The festival starts that evening, but was suspended due to the rain. There were no gaps in my memories. From the late afternoon, until it started to rain, there was no time for me to possibly go to the festival. And those wounds, are they from that? Yes. It was a road through the forest near Sadako's house. I attacked him there. He ran. But I chased him. And finally killed him near the road that leads to lead town. Is that... True? Killing your uncle, it wasn't some wild fantasy? Because the coach didn't believe me. So I spoke slowly, but let myself grow excited. It's true. I killed him with Satoshi's bat. I threw it and the uncle's motorbike into the swamp. I dug a hole, killed him, and buried him. I did it all by myself. Sadako chan's uncle drove past you in a motorbike, did he? And you predicted he'd do that and just waited. I seen he wouldn't be leaving his house that day, so I lied to him over the phone to get him out. Called him. Literally, the whole plan is going on is, is literally being shown off here. We're never. Kate, you will never get away with this crime. This crime now. <laughs> he's always gonna die. Yeah, he's always gonna get arrested or like anything bad is gonna happen to him. Don't. I doubt he's gonna keep the secret anyway. So I'm uh probably shouldn't anyway. Unless I'm uh the uncle is actually still alive and I'm uh even though like literally every other every other bit of evidence like is like still is accounted for. Holy shit. Oh god, the motorbike's gone, the bat's gone, but I'm, uh, the whole... The wounds there from, like, running through the trees are there. Literally everything proves that it all happened, yet at the same time, only, like, the uncle is still alive. Everything else. He's just mad that his motorbike was just, literally just gone. There's no injuries on him, actually, at all. That's even worse to think about. Oh god, that's actually even worse to think about. We go there. He's not even a zombie where he has a wound around his head and he's still alive. It's literally that he has no, like, scratch on him at all. At all. And only Keiichi does. You called him. But your house is so far away from Sadako-chan's. I wouldn't think you'd be able to make it there so soon to calling him. 
I used a phone closer to where I was going to attack him, the one at school. But my bearer saw it. It was Sunday. Wouldn't the school have been locked up? A forest ranger happened to go inside for a bit. I slipped in when I had the chance. After that, Coach grilled me on a few different things regarding the incident. He made sure to question me carefully, looking for any contradictions in my account, <laughs> and nothing was. Well, I'll believe you. What you did yesterday doesn't seem like a dream. I explained everything, including minor details that only someone who had actually committed the act could explain. Now we're paralleling the person who got arrested now. Who was arrested and choking a fork in a, uh, their jail cell. I'm probably misremembering how exactly he died in the cell, but uh, just the fact he choked the fork, that was in my, whether like someone implied that or just thought in my own brain, that just sounds hilarious. That just sounds fucking hilarious. <laughs> I could, of course. It was only yesterday. Coach realized that my story had no expedient coincidences or too convenient details that would exist in a daydream or delusion, and finally seemed to want to believe me. So, do you still think I went to the festival and lost my memory? Coach Lee shook his head. I wonder how you deal with this now, where I'm a someone, like, basically someone killed someone, and now you're just, like, being told straight out of my, everyone says I wasn't where I was. I killed someone, I know I did it. But I'm, uh, everyone says I didn't. I was with them the entire time. What the fuck is happening to me? But everyone in class, they said I was at the festival yesterday. Is that even possible? No, it's not. Not by conventional means. And classmates probably mistook you for someone who looked very similar. No? I can know how group psychology works. Everyone just assumed that you had been at the festival. They couldn't have mistaken me, though. I mean, all the rest of they were spending time with... Keeping my bear in close proximity. It was so much more than having mistaken someone else for me. But saying out loud, I just confused Coach. He spoke to me in whispered tones. Do you feel guilty at all? It didn't sound like he was criticizing me. Even if he had, I would have probably said the same thing. I don't. I did it so that I could return the peaceful days that he'd stolen from us. It's a plan to forget all about having killed him and live my life as usual. Once Sadako's regular smile returns, the one from before he showed up, everything will finally be over. Any chance that someone witnessed the crime? I don't think so. You're literally actually prepared to actually think about, like, actually keeping this under wraps? It makes sense that you want to, like, make sure to, like, keep Sadako and all the happy, holy crap, actually. Is this actually going to happen? Is Keiichi actually going to get away with a crime with, with an adult's help? That's going to be something. That's going to be, oh, I want that to happen. That sounds cool. Ah. God damn it. I've been teased too many times in other games that they did something like that. Or like, a, a main character of a, of a cast did it. And I think, like, well, I've seen plenty of mystery stories, like, you know, do the whole thing of, like, them, uh, where people, like, thought the main character did it. And they, like, or someone framed them for it. Or everyone just thought, like, randomly out of nowhere, just delusional lies or anything like that. And they never go anywhere with it. They don't even touch upon it again. God damn it. That have been such a cool idea. Ah, oh. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Don't fail me, game. <laughs> Don't fail me. I don't think so. If someone had seen me, I would have been arrested already. I am a doctor. My job is to save lives. So cannot make any statements to the effect of condoning they take another's life. Then don't say anything. Your silence in the matter speaks volumes, doctor. <laughs> Instead, I will say this. The <laughs> Coach Lee rose and placed a hand on my shoulder. For saving Sadako-chan, I thank you. Coach's eyes started shedding warm tears. When I looked at him, I started to feel some tears of my own. <laughs> I didn't know what I was crying for. And so for a little while, the two men in the room fought back their tears. But it's strange. What is? I'm sure I killed him, and yet he seems to have returned home alive. Coach's expression immediately sharpened. Depending on the situation, there are many ways that mere unconsciousness can look like real death to a layperson. You think it's possible you were just knocked out. There was blood leaking everywhere, so it's definitely not that. If there's no wound, that just proves there's something weird. Or there's fucking some, there's something very fucky going on. I didn't check for a pulse, but I'm pretty sure I did him in. Can I ask you to reproduce the situation in which you attacked him, my Barrison? Coach wrote up a health and witness weak poster nearby and offered to me to represent the bat. <laughs> Close the door. Um, uh, 
um, goes outside. Okay, I'm a, you reception desk. I'm a, everyone's allowed to leave. I'm a, I'm gonna stay a while to assess this patient a bit more. <laughs> we're going to, um, uh, we're gonna solve a crime and make sure anything happens. I'm a, oh god. Oh, I, oh, I'm just thinking about that. That sounds like it's such a cool idea, honestly. Or like, I'm a, a murder mystery, like, just any kind of mystery, just like, a story like that, where I'm, uh, like, you know for a fact, like, going into it, the main character is the killer or anything like that. Like, going into it, you know. And then, but, like, I'm, uh, they leave out the detail of them actually killing them. And the rest of the story is them, I guess, you piecing together how they did it. And there's some twists and turns about it going along the way, though. Oh, that'd be so cool to see, honestly. That'd be, I wonder how they would execute that well. That sounds like an interesting idea. <laughs> Coach wrote up a, a health and fitness week poster nearby and offered it to me. To represent the bat. Take a swing at me. <laughs> Take a swing at me. <laughs> Though I may have been lost the emotion of the beast that night. I remember in detail the number of times I swung the bat, the angles I'd swung from, and the force I applied. We're just doing reenactments. <laughs> Using couch to stand up for the uncle, I reproduced them one by one. And when he tripped and fell, I bashed him to the top of the head like this. When I did, it felt different from the other strikes. I cracked his skull. Okay, okay, maybe that, maybe that line was in there, the cracked skull thing, but that's the, the turn the mush part. Coach was calmly analyzing this information, using the place I'd struck in the situation at hand to find out what state that uncle's body had been in. I wasn't totally sure he was dead, so I hit him a few more times after he fell. Did he react at all? At first, I sort of felt his body jolting with every hit. Eventually, it stopped too, and he didn't react at all. Hmm. He folded his arms and said, hmm, a few times. You believe it? I, I, Kichi just basically, like, killed someone completely accurately with no medical knowledge. All in his mind. And Uncle's still alive. Then he spoke. He's dead. There's not much doubt about it. He didn't just look like he was? I can't say very much from just restoring my Barasan. I think it's almost certain. I thought you bury the corpse in the mud, and that took you quite a bit of time, right? Let's say it took you 30 minutes. That would mean he was buried under the muddy water for those 30 minutes. Muddy water, you would have suffocated then anyway. If you don't breathe for that long, your brain will die no matter what. I mean, even ignoring how hard I hit him, he would definitely have died while I was burying him? That's right. It's impossible to stay alive buried underground for 30 minutes. Impossible? No, you're right. Lily Soma... Oh god, it's either like literally just the parallel of like him of the ant's death of being the death, or like literally drowning in like you know the swamp like other people died in the past. My god, it's some of the torture implements in the past, honestly. Like being tied to like him up some wooden post and sink into the swamp slowly. It's just one of those. Impossible. You're right, but Sadako, she says she's he's alive. Coach, a doctor, just gave a stamp of approval that he was dead for sure. That made it seem all the more unfair that he could still be among the living. My Barasan, this is a really horrible idea, but... Suppose the person you killed wasn't actually her uncle. Huh? He's right, that could be why. Could think since he might definitely have killed someone, but him still being alive. No, you definitely said without a doubt that it was him. You said without a doubt, you looking all about the motorbike, and you saw the exact face. So either it was, it's actually the worst thing ever that I'm a, uh, the uncle has a twin brother. That's actually the worst thing ever. But driving the same motorbike, and Sadako never mentioned it like he has a twin at all, or anything like that. That sounds so unbelievably untrue. So unbelievably untrue. Okay. That could be why. It could the inconsistency of my definitely having killed someone. That still is a bit wording. I know, like, uh, uh, translation-wise, or like, that's all that. KG, you like saying that a lot. I don't like how that grammarly really sounds. Yeah, that's the only time I'll be grammar Nazi about it. It doesn't sound right. <laughs> but him still being alive. There's no way. I mean, we were both at Sadako's house when she was bringing his alcohol inside. And there was a man who stuck his face out the window to look. And you were there, so you, can, you, you can't deny that. It was him, right? That was Sadako's uncle, right? Yes. You confirmed it. You confirmed it. You're not wrong. It was that man. Could she have had more than one uncle or something? Not one that I've ever heard of. Just him. Could you tell me what he looked like? Well, his height first. He was about 
175 centimeters, maybe a little taller. I do not know centimeters. <laughs> In order to eliminate the worst possibility that killed someone else, Coach began to thoroughly compare the man his mind looked like with what I told him the person I killed looked like. But no matter how in depth my description went, none of the characteristics differed. That should be kind of worse if it did, but eh. The uncle's traits, according to the coach, were all exactly the same as the person I killed. But those traits were all extremely vague, and they weren't particularly distinct at a glance. Could you, well, is there anything else about him that let, would let us identify him for sure? I don't even mention it, I've never seen it, but... At least Sadako chan once said a long time ago that he had a tattoo of a tiger or something on his back. A tattoo? That was really important. There's nothing mention of a tattoo anywhere. Not everyone had a tattoo. If I found a tiger tattoo in the back of the man's corpse, it would be proof that I killed the right one. It won't, though. That was one thing that would verify this. To go to Sadako's house. I see for myself the uncle that I returned home despite having died. But that was far more terrifying than taking up the body and looking at its back. Without even looking at the tattoo, I knew for sure I killed the, the one I killed had been Sadako's uncle. I cut his head open and killed him. It'd probably just be worse if honestly, like, the uncle was still there. Is literally acting the exact same way. He's doing everything just how the uncle normally does. You can see him, you can physically touch him in the flesh, but then you go to the grave that buried him, and the corpse is still fucking there. It'll be worse, actually. And yet, he'd gone back home. It wasn't even misunderstanding, or even the shadow of a doubt in my mind about having killed him. And yet, it was impossible for him to exist. Kind of like how Keichi and my bear had been to the, the festival, despite it being impossible. That small commonality. We feel as though a faint but bizarre force was permeating, permeating this insane Hinamazawa. I think it's time to leave this town after this whole incident is over and done with. Egg your parents on to leave. I wonder on earth what could have happened. It's about you not going to the festival and killing Sadako's uncle. You were at the festival and the uncle you killed is alive. None of this makes any sense. Look at everything that way. It's almost like I'm just having a nightmare and there's no killer at all. But it's the truth. The sensation is I used my own hands. And that bat to bash him again and again. It was no illusion or dream. Coach let a slow sigh. After looking at the clock, got up. Let's go over all this a little more seriously. If you excuse me, I'll go put on, my, put on some tea. Clinks with the clothes after all. I need to let the other employees leave. Okay, please, I'm, uh, let them go. Uh, hopefully no one's listening to that conversation. Coach stood up and went onto the hallway, through the wide open door, which everyone can hear wafting through, and everyone eavesdropped and knows like that Keiichi killed someone, but since he's alive, I'm, uh, in vivid- This is the weirdest fucking thing to think about. I'm arresting you for this crime, but they're still alive. Like, you still ki try to kill them, but I'm, uh, I didn't know what a lot of injuries on them, right? They have no wounds on them. You still try to attack them, but I'm, uh, where's the bat then? You don't have any evidence of that. You have wounds on you. I was just going running through the woods, but nothing happened by your logic then. Just absolutely just everything coincides like like the whole event happening. There's absolutely nothing to indict on. It's <laughs> that's something. Coached up and went out to the hallway, leaving me alone. I fell asleep. <laughs> the clock is on the strike six. Holy shit. When the, when the clinic closed at five from the sound of it? It was, a, it was about to close, not an hour from then. I was at the festival, and Inko Kill was alive. I swear to God, uh, game, you better, like, you better, um, uh, do the, like, we haven't gotten the, you know, the, the segments, the, the, the black bar segmented things yet. That better be, this better not be the end of this whole chapter. This better be the halfway point, <laughs> because this is too good. We gotta see whatever happens next, okay? Had I really committed the murder yesterday? The only whisper of fact that proved it happened was the absence of that bat from Satoshi's locker. Or literally, um, uh, the murder never did happen, and um, uh, your brain was just possessed to him, uh, take the bat of the locker and just throw it into the swamp, putting it right back into the hands of uh, Satoshi's ghost. <laughs> That's literally everything else. And we can't really get over the fact that um, uh, that was Satoshi's voice. Like, just saying that. Even if it was literally just, you know, an, like an exhaled breath, like I went back and listened to that voice line, it was literally just like, you know, faint, like, you know, uh, hi. Like, meaning yes, or yeah in that case, translation. In any case, I was glad that Coach had taken my nonsense seriously. 
I just confessed to murder. Nobody would find a person away. But Coach didn't run. He cried with me. Well, he sympathizes with your cause. That's why he's keeping the secret. For now. I was glad he did. Like so, when tension smooth, me smoothly melted away. So they realized they really had to urinate. I thought he'd use the restroom when Coach had stepped out. I was running across from the waiting room. Oh, we're going to over here. He's going to say something. So in the room, I saw Coach and two male doctors wearing white clothing staying in the shadows of the hallway nearby. I didn't particularly intend to ease up or anything, but I was quite surprised upon noticing how easy they seemed. I hid behind the wall and quietly listened in. He's gonna he's gonna tell everyone else. So the coach is giving directions to the two doctors. Black tea. I'll make some. Mixing the stuff you think best for the occasion. Cover the taste of milk and sugar. He may grow suspicious of the sudden onset of drowsiness. It's possibly made he get agitated and become violent. You will handle that. How many male staff are still here? One mountain dog, including us, three. What? What was all this? I think it was already agitated despite what Coach said. Was that it? Was this a casual conversation that was only sounding unbelievable to me? No, I'm gonna uh, go out the w window. I'm gonna uh, run for your life. But I'm gonna, uh, if like, literally all this, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, no. Coach said he would bring some black tea and left the room. And the shadows are telling his subordinates to put some kind of sleeping powder in the tea? As they're getting extra help in the case I thought the sudden sleepiness was suspicious and starting getting violent? Hey, wait, Kishimai Bera. Calm down, calm down. There's no way something stupid could be happening. I mean, he was genuinely listening to my story and even cried with me. Actors. <laughs> Acting. <laughs> I thought... I thought he was the one person in Mizawa could understand. This, this was, no, this was. There are sons of fabrication or falsehoods, and his memories yesterday in particular are completely confused. Oh my god. He can only tell truth and falsehood. It's quite similar to multiple personality disorder. What the fuck? It's how quickly this mental disorder emerged, it's not normal. Maybe it's inborn, or perhaps there were signs of it before he moved here. I'll have to take a look at any records of him staying at the mental hospital before he moved here. In any case, I want to take a quiet nap. These two, doc do two doctors nod deeply. I should probably contact my Barracon's parents, too. Though I can't think of what to tell them. Please find his home phone number for me. My eyes still moist, begin to shed tears once more. So you're just going to go on the run now, forever now? This was too cruel. I really thought he understood. I believe what I told him. And now, from their side of the wall, he was bluntly treating me like a crazy person. I believed you. I believed you! I let my guard down. I thought you were the only ally I had left at that insane night. Was that a lie? All that. But thanking me on Sadako's behalf. Were you just pretending in order to keep me placated? Ugh. My tears fell to the floor in frustration. I was an idiot. I don't know how to take any of this. Th like this. My immediate first thought when seeing it, like, hearing just like about two doctors, was literally just like them, uh, the doctor who came. Like, in their first chapter, then the director, and all that. And with the syringe and all that, like, unless k like literally just could be complete crazy from the very beginning, which, honestly, I'm, uh, it doesn't seem like delusion so far, honestly, then I'm, uh, eh. And it was like, k is no, like, nothing's going on with him. Unless you're saying, like, it's some stupid twist of, like, his parents were, like, mixing medicine, like, into his food and all that, like, I'm knowing and all that. No. 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 Now we just can't be sure of anything now. <laughs> I was an idiot. I was an idiot. I was such an idiot for believing that bastard. Her first steps approaching the doctors. A man in a dress shirt with no tie came running up. Dr. Eerie. It's terrible. They... They found Takano-san. Takano-san? Wait, where? Well, apparently they discovered her burnt corpse in the mountains in, in Gifu. She's dead? Takano-san? The men, all surprised, ex exchanged glances. Dead? Takano-san? You probably should, like, oh my god, did you mention that I'm, uh, you mentioned you took a ride home from Sadako, well, from, not Sadako, from Takano? Hey, wait, does that mean I cursed her wishing for a death, that wish was granted? Yeah, yeah, it's all your fault. <laughs> What do you mean, burnt corpse? Was it an accident? 
According to the statement from the prefectural police department, the possibility is extremely high that she was murdered. <laughs> As I cried, I laughed quietly. Serves you right. Serves you right. Okay, you're slowly just going insane. I don't really blame you here, actually. If I had run to the woman, my, mur my murder would have been perfect. But she had to just come driving up to me and try to coerce me like that. I regretted not having killed her in the spot, but now she was dead anyway. My curse. I wish her demise was fulfilled. Serves you right. Serves you right. Risa-san died and Takana-san died. Risa-san? Risa-san? What on earth could be happening in Hanamazawa? Don't tell me this is all oyashiro sans curse this year. Like hell, the curse be real, Coach said. Everyone present just nod as curse, the coach nod at curse at no one in particular. Okay, we're going full supervillain mode. Yes. Maybe it wasn't Oyashiro-sama. It was definitely a spell. A curse! Ah, the, the supernatural's back in action. I wished for her to die. So she did. Okay, um, uh, you're just going hard in grief now. This wasn't just a coincidence, and she died because I wished for it. Then you'll die next, coach. You betrayed me. You pretended to believe me, but deep down you thought I was a madman. Look down at me with all the pity in your eyes. For now, get the black tea ready. I'll bring inside. I don't think he let anyone besides me be alone with him. Shit, shit, shit! What do I do? What do I do, Keisha Maibera? Somehow I heard the vo voice of a nurse. Dr. Eerie? Oh, there you are. You have a phone call. I'm a little busy at the moment, so please send me a call back. Who is it from? Uh, Mr. Oishi from the Okinomiya Police Department. Oh, sheesh, what bad timing. Alright, I'll answer it. It's literally just calling, they found the corpse, but I'm the uncle still alive. Coach left to go answer the phone. The other men head towards the room with a teapot to make the black tea like Coach ordered them to. Fortunately, Coach having to take the phone call meant there would be extra time for me to act. I had to decide what to do now. Would I let him take, like, would I let him make me drink the meditative infused tea or be held down and thrown into a mental hospital? Nothing would come from starting a brawl here. They more people anyway, and they're all bigger than me. And they probably have more experience with, with violent patients. Especially my, if this is like a normal clinic of my, especially with kids who may be like, you know, like, like, for example, like vaccination injections and all that for shots. They'll probably be used to like, you know, restraining people too. If it came to a fight, I didn't stand a chance in hell. If I couldn't win against them, there's only one thing left to do. Flight! Run. Adrenaline suddenly rushed into my brain. My body started to move with a keen instinct, like I had on that night. My surface temperature quickly cooled. Transmission routes between my cells enlarged. Using 360-degree visual information, I searched for an escape route. I opened the window behind me. As I was a parking lot, there was no cars. A little beyond that was the bicycle I'd taken to get here. I determined this would be the quickest method of escape. I pushed the window swiftly, with a little sound to raise as little suspicion as I could. The speed and sounds was shadow, but I had in the night I chased her uncle. I locked the window and opened it up. A cool evening breeze wafted in. I stuck my head out and looked out at the parking lot again. Nobody in sight. Good! Now make a mad dash! Uh, somersault over the window and just make a dash for the bike. Then run! Uh, pedal away! Pedal out of town! Flee like Satoshi did! Go missing the same way he did! No need to hesitate. I quickly crawled outside and closed the window behind me. I held my breath and listened carefully. Nobody seemed to have realized I'd run. I looked around. I jumped on my bicycle and zoomed away. The pedals clattered under the force. My bike always creaked like this. The pedals always whine every time I push down on them. You should, that means you need to oil them more. We're paranoid and infused brainer saying that it's now louder than it usually is. My bike wasn't the only, only one crying, though. <laughs> my tears fell as the wind cut through them. They rode the breeze and scattered behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this. I hate this. I'm not the crazy one. Hinamazawa is. How... How dare you treat me like a madman? Die. Die. Just fucking die already. I believed you. I believed you in all... You all. <sighs> I'd gone to the hospital in order to escape Reina and Mion's invitation. But the alley that was waiting for me... Have been too cruel instead. 
Who was insane? Me or Hanamizawa? I think the, the easiest answer is everyone. Or what's the answer to something else? I started having trouble breathing. Didn't have any clue what's happening anymore. The loud chirps of Higarashi were irritating me. <laughs> were even the H Hinamizawa, Higarashi, and Nusuo calling into the wind? No, that wasn't quite it. They weren't calling. They were crying. The pained wailing of those lost in some kind of rhythm. Another world. No longer able to return to their own sunlight. I didn't do all that to end up in a world like that. And actually, about this time, I might have been having fun with everyone else. Sadako would have gotten her smile back to realizing her uncle would never come home, and she might have shown it to us at her first club meeting in a while. That was the kind of world I wished for. So what was this? Why did I end up in such a strange, ghastly world? Someone I killed was living like normal, and I enjoyed myself at the festival despite not being there. I don't want it. I don't want this strange world. When did it start to go all wrong? When? When? No matter how much I thought about it, I never understood. Oh, it's back raining. No, my goodness, okay. I rode swiftly and returned to my home. It had begun to rain during my journey back, and just like yesterday, I was now soaked. But I care so about something so trivial right now. The pain of my felt in my ch my heart that coach, the one person I trusted was acting so cruelly was far worse. They had no allies in Hinamazawa anymore. With a naive thought that I at least one of my parents side with me, I stepped to the side the front door. Wait, Kichi, we dark soon. There's something you want to check, right? Oh God, you're gonna check the shovel. Yes, I wanted to get the man's corpse and get a look at his back. The tiger tattoo there. I know beyond a, sh a doubt he was Sadako's uncle. Well, I mean, depending on if you get arrested or not, put into mental asylum. At least you get that. I'm uh, I guess I'm uh, at least you get that confirmation. But I'm uh, the tattoo's there. But I'm uh, uncle's still alive. I'm uh, insanely back again. Okay. That long night wouldn't end until I was certain. If this insane world was all reparation, all divine punishment, they needed to make certain. There had been successful enough to even deserve to pay that price. Nope, by this point, you don't deserve anything. You don't deserve to get tortured at all. And if it's the same thing of the curse is going on with Sadako, then I'm, uh, literally, you're being shared the exact same fate so far. Unfucking fortunately. And again, this is going back to my complete thing of I hate Fain Destiny. Because from the sound of it, Sadako either was always meant to be in this situation. Like, always had to go through that pain and trauma. And all of this technically happened just because it's all according to plan. It's all by design. Fucking shit. I went to the storage room again and got the, t the shovel. It had been washed in the rain, but the paint was peeling, making it look unsightly. I never, ever wanted to touch this thing again. Not even when you went camping again with your parents? <laughs> The sensation of it in my hands was totally different from the night before. There was ruthless coldness about it. Yeah. It'll be dark soon. So I need a lantern, too. We're recreating everything! Yay! There will be a little bit of light from the street lights, but it would get extremely dark. Uh. I thought I put the lantern here. I suddenly noticed it wasn't anywhere to be found. I mean, like a bolt of lightning. Of course. The night, I had brought the lantern back with me. I looked at the place I buried the body. If I didn't go to get it soon, it would get very dark. Then not only would I be unable to find the spot I buried the corpse, but I wouldn't even be able to find the lantern itself. If it happened, it was all over. I actually completely forgot the lantern. So you left two things out there in the night. Okay. I need to hurry. In order to fit the shovel in the basket in the front of my bike, I need to twist and disassemble it. it looks like there was dirt in the joints, and no matter how hard I pushed, it didn't want to come apart. That basically just proves it all happened, and everyone else is literally just calling you crazy for no fucking reason. Whatever, like, whatever I'm, uh, coach is on right now, it's literally because some people are literally, it's literally this whole town is against you right now. Like, oh my god, holy shit.
What is even fucking happening? After a strenuous effort, I realized I couldn't get it apart. I decided to hold it in one hand and run my bike with the other. Why then go to all the effort of, like, pretending that Sadako wasn't in pain? No, she definitely was in fucking pain. It all, it's all clear, but, like, why exactly then decide to go completely against the fact? Like, you're all lying and just saying, like, for a fact that I'm, uh... She, sh like, her family and all that should just take the abuse. All the way through. Oh, fucking God. With a downpour soaking me through and a shovel in one hand. In writing one-handed. It was as if I returned to that night. No, return was the wrong word. It was more like the night had never ended. The pain of the raindrops striking me was no different from then. The thing that was different was Hinamazawa. The world and nothing else. The rain clouds were already making it dark. And now it was about time for the sun to set. I could tell it would only get rapidly darker. The straight road leading to town the middle of it. That should be where I buried it. Yes. It was near that street light. The night too. The water from the downpour splashing down from the street lights overhanging like a waterfall. Well, I'm, uh, if I'm, uh, the coach comes down and just like says there's nothing there, then I'm uh, he's basically just being a fucking manipulative bastard. And I already said like I, I, I didn't trust him for some like at, at a point. <laughs> there was this weird intuitive sense. In besides that words. The pouring rain was exactly the same as it had been that night, and thus it brought my memories into focus. I left my bike in the brush and stepped into the forest, the ground already soaked with mud. Where had I buried him? Think. The darkness. The shadows. The water. The mud. Everything was the same. Think. And then I spotted the lantern by a fallen moss covered tree. Well, it's definitely here. That's right, I left it right there. If I left the lantern here, then I would have buried him over there. The sensation of sitting in the sludge, my feet remember the spot better than my eyes did. I plunged a shovel into the ground. It's hard. It wasn't here. I just dug it up, so it should have been softer. I take my shovel down a few spots to test what they feel like. One of them clearly felt deeper. I recall where the lantern was. The trees and things were in relation to each other, and knew that it had to be here. Under here slept that man's corpse. It would definitely be a tattoo of a tiger on his back. But if it wasn't there, then I made a horrible mistake and killed someone completely unrelated instead. The more dazed that had thought uncle wasn't dead. Then I would regret having gotten someone else mixed up in this. If this insane world was punishing for the sin of committing murder, I won't be able to accept it until I kill Sadako's uncle for good. And then, without any fear, I attack him again, here. And that time, I would kill him for sure. But what? Tattoo is there. I think it is. And I'm, uh, everything is, that just means I'm, uh, everyone else is a fucking enemy then. And they're m trying to gaslight you. Uh, Stockholm Syndrome all over again. Don't go down that route, please. Don't go down that route. That would definitely mean I killed Sadako's uncle. And that would mean that Sadako, in some weird comparison, lied about it. For some fucking reason. Or literally someone decided to take the uncle's place and continue it. Which is technically worse. That'd be terribly strange. If I killed him for sure, then who was the uncle of Sadako's house this very moment? Impossible. I didn't even know anymore what I was using the word impossible to refer to. I used the word quite a few times today. I had to make the words impossible fit just one thing. What would it be? This whole situation. That much was obvious to me. The impossible of this crazy world to be real. I shouted, then turned behind me. There was nobody there, of course. It had been bothering me for a while. Those footsteps had been following me the entire day. Even just now, an extra set of footsteps had splashed behind me. Yeah, okay, uh, it's not a hallucination anymore. No one's actually there. No indication of anyone, even. But they were there. Who are you? You've been following me ever since I came to this world. That's right. Thinking back, the first time I heard those footsteps was after Takano's son I had parted. Those footsteps. 
for my welcome to the strange inside out world. No one could be there. I get no response, right? For it was, they just keep staring at me. It wasn't ominous, just unpleasant. They're staring into empty space for a bit. They bathed in the rain. My illogical anger slipped away. My tension loose my tension loosened. My tired feeling it reared its head. I taste this feeling at night too. You're being mentally exhausted. You haven't even done anything yet. You only just biked here and now is and you biked here back and forth and you're not this exhausted. The sudden exhaustion I felt as the tension in my brain loosened. My vision quickly narrowed, and I felt like everything around me had suddenly grown gone darker. I couldn't give in to the sensation. I would light what little explosive were left in my brain and force myself to keep going. I needed to ignite man up before my stamina ran out. I needed to see the tattoo on his back. I caught my suddenly ragged breath and calmed down. I stuck the shovel into the soft, muddy ground again. It felt exactly the same as that night. In the sense of digging a hole in the beach, with water coming into it with every wave. What day was today? Had I gone back to the night of wanton ganashi? Every strange thought that came to mind tormented me. Given my exhaustion, I didn't think I could manage to hold those thoughts back. Once the hole was deep, all illumination finally faded, blanketing my vision in jet black. It's probably the moment the sun had finally set too. That night, I feared the worst and gone without using much light. My senses were so strained that I could see even the darkness, but now I didn't have that kind of strength left. I drained everything I had last night, and the darkness would be lethal. I decided to turn on the lantern. Putting it on the first setting would make it give up a faint light. Even with how little there, light there was, it was enough. And people wouldn't be able to see it from far away in this rain, right? I grabbed the chilled lantern, turned the dial with a click, set it to the weakest set light setting, and turned it on. The uncanny world of silhouettes appeared before me. No. Oh god, just this whole scene. I would love this only just to be a CG, just like that. We don't even see anything in the grave just yet. It's literally just... Just a up. If they're gonna add more CGs, like anything like that, I would love this to be like one scene then. Just one CG. Just Keiichi standing in, like holding like the lantern, staring around the silhouettes, the shadows going on, the grave right there. Like you can't even tell what's inside there just yet. Like the, the shadows, the shadow of the lantern is just harking over the grave. You can't even see what was inside there. That would be like, that'd be so cool to see. The uncanny world of silhouettes appeared before me. A complex and strange shadowy world, created by the intricate entanglement of trees and branches. And then suddenly, all the branches made a perfect shadow of a person standing right there in the distance. I had only turned on a light. It was like that was all it took to make the world into something else. I let a quick, tired breath and wiped the liquid, neither rain nor sweat, from my brow. The fuck does that mean? Ectoplasm? Then I raised the shovel into the air and thundered into the mud. That moment, the silhouette surrounding me ominously moved all at once. Uh. Inside my head, something packed in there, something coarse but not hot or cold, was loudly rushing about. The silhouettes were all around me, looking down at me. And one of them, a silhouette bigger than the others, stepped forward. Hi. Good evening. How's it going? You wanna look in the grave with me? <laughs> the moon sure is beautiful tonight. The coarseness of my brain shot through my whole spine, left me in my waist. Especially my body all left me through my hips, and I crouched down with a splash. The sea of mud I dug myself. Oh, is she? Is that really how you dressed your elders? Uh, n even, I'd probably be treating you better if I'm, uh, you didn't shake a. Uh, his shoulders like rapidly out of nowhere the first time you met him. Then uh, I'm pretty sure it'd be more nice to these, but I'm uh, no, fuck you. It was a rough time of it once you become an adult. <laughs> it wasn't only Oishi, but five or six of them in a row, men wearing raincoats. I had no inkling that so many people had gotten so close. It's like once I turned the lantern, they just appeared there, sliding out of the shadows. Please don't mind us. 
just think of us as trees in the forest, perhaps. Then why do you, like, well then, shush, trees aren't supposed to talk. Shut up already, then. Shush, slink back into the shadows, then. Just watch as we do our work, okay? Don't mind them. Yes. Pay no attention to us, please. Do you dig in your hole? Uh. It's very late and raining very hard. And you're working pretty fervently. You won't get in your way. Please dig to your heart's content. No. <laughs> That's very much my own grave, you fucks. No, thank you, I said. Try to get up and turn around. Two men blocked that route. The sun either side of me lifted me up with amazing strength and threw me into the sea of mud. As I soaked in the mud bath I dug for myself, I looked at the silhouette looking down at me. That just sounds like another good CG to look at. Oh, she squatted. Picked up my shovel and threw it at my feet for me. Pick it up. Pick it up. <laughs> it bounced loudly off the mud and hit me in the face. <laughs> the blade end or the handle? Come. Please. Continue. Continue. I couldn't bear the oppressiveness of the silhouette surrounding me, and slowly I struck the shovel into the mud again. I felt like I was digging my own grave. Eh, no, that's technically what it is. Either emotionally or spiritually or, you know, physically. I kept digging. It wouldn't matter whether it was a tattoo or not, because that man's corpse would appear eventually. It was all over. It turned on all sides and nowhere to go. I just couldn't figure it out how much I thought about it. Why were they here? Was it Takano-san? Only one person that could have made the connection between me and this place. Shit, I knew it. She deserved to die. She's... De she's already dead. The only one who could uh, obviously, like, say all this, if you, like, you basically said you buried the body out of town, and then you heard the Coach, like, get a call from the police department. Of fucking course they're here. Of course it's his fault why, like, they're all here. But the one thing I do not understand is if everything was so unbelievably, um, uh, like, if all this was fucking true, why then would then he just go about and just say, like, he was crazy? It just means he's just a murderer. He's like, why say he has multiple personality disorder and all that? Why all that? Just say he's a fucking criminal then. Stopping so soon? Ah! Bam. Oishi kicked me in the back, which took me a surprise, sending me flying to the mud. Rip and dig, please. You'll be hilarious. Because the body wasn't there. And then I'm, uh... Oh, what corpse is in here? Where is it? I'll sue you for abuse, mister! <laughs> you really should consider the fact that some of us are sitting out here in the rain. Fuck you. If you don't like the rain, then just go home. Or, you know, do the grave digging yourself. I'll just be right here if I can't leave. I'll just sit myself right here and just watch you dig up my own work, then. <laughs> I want you to kick some mud into my face. Use your hands, please. Let your mouth. I don't know. You seem to be doing that just fine. You're spewing your own bile out. Only stage actors do both at once. Well, you're doing a great job of that. Isn't that right, boys? The men around him didn't react, not knowing whether they should laugh. But when Oishi glared at them, they started mumbling out pain chuckles. Even they're not um, uh, exactly on board with this either. Okay. Just who was this guy? Uh, Harbinger of Doom. I guess you can say in this round anyway. I knew the world changed that night. I went even further back. Didn't it start when this guy showed up? That was our peaceful days had been taken from us. Ever since he showed up in Hemzawa, things have been odd. He was the true outsider! Everyone stopped smiling, and the world went crazy. <laughs> the ground on my feet gradually got harder and heavier. At this point, even I started to think something was odd. I hadn't buried him this deep on that night, had I? My exhaustion peaked and I sat down the spot. Okay... How long do you want me to dig? Because these days have no stamina. Hey, you. In Oishi's gesture, the men all pulled out their own sinister-looking shovels. Well, it seems like you're all prepared. Why did you even need me to do it? Okay. They watched the days. One of them grabbed my collar, dragged me to the hole, and threw me to the ground. The rest of the men stepped into the hole I dug and started shoveling themselves. I stared at them dumbfounded. 
Oishi sauntered over and squatted down to look at me directly. Keichi Maibara-san. This is the hobby yours, digging holes on rainy nights? Yes. I didn't respond. I just took one of the tin buckets they were using to bail out the muddy water, scooped out some of it, and splashed the whole thing in my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't like you anyway. Rain's pretty heavy today, too. Yeah, I'd say. It's literally just soaking you down. Oh, no, you should probably just head home. Or how would I get? I still don't understand the appeal. He smiled to himself and scooped up another bucket full of muddy water. I'll ask you again. Is digging holes in rainy nights your hobby? Yes. Who the hell would have a hobby like that? Splash. He hit me with another bucket full of muddy water. At this point, I'll just be fucking sassy then. If they already know what's going on, then just... Just take it in stride, then. If they're just gonna take some sick enjoyment of this, then take sick enjoyment back. Uh she knows how you want to be treated. Isn't that the golden standard rule? And, like, it's we're still in school, so we gotta practice those good morals and all that, right? Even when we did something terrible. Or did we, though? The pebbles in it stung. Would it be something in that hole? I don't know. Why don't you find out? I've always liked that story, you know. The man who can make plants bloom in the puppy digging his yard for gold. He spoke. Th he ran the bucket through the muddy water again. What exactly do you do if there's absolutely nothing there? Honestly. Because, like, actually thinking about it, Keiichi has all the reason in the world, like, based on, like, how you met him last, I'm, uh, fully fucking hate you. How would you react then afterwards? I'm actually fucking curious. To splash in my face again. What kind of treasure is buried down there, hmm? I don't know. You should get a metal detector and find out yourself. You can get some of your own lap fucking dog to do it. Can you at least give me a hint? <laughs> if you want to know, then dig here on your own time. You fucking pig. I wasn't saying that out loud. Boy, she mercifully drenched me in the muddy water again anyway. No, you should say it out loud just because. Shit, shit, shit. If only, if only you hadn't shown up, the world wouldn't have gone wrong. And since you showed up, things have been strange. It's like I got abused by your uncle. I ended up killing him and the world went crazy. Here's how it all began. Because of this culprit. You should say it all aloud then. He splashed on their bucket of mud in my face. My insides were seething with anger. Ty. You. You die too! If I had some strange power to kill someone by cursing them, like a Takano-san, then you're dead. And I won't be Oya Shirosum's curse. I'll be mine. I'll curse you and kill you. What a rebellious look you're wearing. Why don't we use this opportunity to teach you a thing or two in that regard? We really do live in peace these days. Well, yeah, then you came along and started shaking and I'm, uh, making a mess of that first. Your time. You shook the peace. I was at your age. Corporal punishment was the norm for everything. What the absolute fuck? Oishi-san? I'm not digging him in the raincoat's wipes and sweat off and called Oishi over. He tossed the bucket away, then turned around with an evil grin in his face. Yes, what is it? Please, look at this. Acceptance, or maybe resignation. I want to say to them, see, Blockhead's finally found it. But I'm, uh, thinking about it now, actually, I'm, uh, you never said any words that confirm deny what exactly you're trying to look for in digging up. Yeah, that's right. I'm the one who killed him. And there's no one in the grave. But you're the police, so it's your job to figure out who he is, right? Come on. Prove to me that he's really Sadako's uncle. What on earth? We think it's an old drain pipe. It seems to be connected to the irrigation channel over there. Let's smash the thing. It's not as, it's not being used, is it? The mineral exchange glances, then hesitantly broach on their topic. Oishi-san, the ground down there is pretty hard. I don't think anything could be deeper than this. Did we get the location wrong? No, at first, I definitely feel like the place has been dug up before. After digging so far, the ground suddenly hardened. Okay, Keishi, I'm, uh, now. Now be smug. Uh, pretend this is all part of the plan. <laughs> we think we'd gone down further than the hole we was originally dug. So what does that mean? It means you fucking fucked up! <laughs> There's a hole here and someone filled it back up? Is that what you're trying to tell me? What? What are they talking about? <laughs> well, well, I'm at a loss. Aren't you? 
my Barasan. I wish you grabbed my collar and dragged me to the large, huge hole I dug. The mud inside was like an ocean. Couldn't see any drain pipe down there. One of the men started with a shovel. Let me hear it clang against something hard. There's no die buried him here. If I hadn't buried him this deep, it was like to the surface level. I didn't dig deep enough to unearth an entire drain pipe. So, then, this man, his corpse, where was it? Proof. Proof that I'd been successful, successful that night was gone. 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 Then what? What on earth was I? Was I actually crazy after all? Just possessed by the delusion that I killed someone? That couldn't be. It was the unmistakable truth. It couldn't have been a hallucination. But now the most important evidence that hadn't been an illusion was gone. And a Sadako's uncle is still around, but I'm, uh, literally every piece of evidence still corresponds to the fact that I'm, uh, the uncle is still about. But the uncle has not made anything. If his motorbike is still at his home, is it totally as bad as gone, you swim to, you actually threw into the swamp. You push his motorbike into the swamp and all that. You did bury him here. He would have actually drowned. It makes fucking sense. He would have fucking drowned no matter what, either way. Even if, like, everything that I'm, uh, like, Coach said, like, Coach Erie, like, said was a fucking lie. Like, all he said all to the point made complete and utter sense. He was going along with a fucking delusion. It all makes complete sense. So don't you dare go along with that fact. He was buried for over 30 minutes and pouring down rain. And at this point, that I'm, uh, it's rained down so hard that it's literally striking Katie's skin that he was literally biking here. So literally, it was raining that hard. It was almost like a flash flood. No matter what, he would be dead. But he's not. So, I'm, um, uh... I don't know, zombies or demon possessions is all this all thing that comes to mind right now. There's nothing that comes to mind right now which literally proves outright how am I the uncle survived all this, unless somehow, in the absence of complete darkness, with Keiichi shoved, like, making a grave and burying him inside there, then I'm, uh... Yeah. Like, unless, like, somehow, like, the, un like, the uncle, like, you know, pretended to be dead all, all this time, even though Keiichi slammed him in the head with the, the baseball bat after he went un unconscious and he couldn't react anymore, there's no way he's still, like, he's still alive. Honestly. They're just none. Even if, like, KG, like, only dug the, the, the grave in and quickly, like, you know, moved the body and just moved all the dirt onto it and, like, you know, left quickly and all that, it still wouldn't make fucking sense. I killed him. I buried him. I had absolute unwavering confidence, that fact. Then I failed to kill him. Or the curse only wants a monster and people to die. And nothing you can do can stop it. Which is even fucking worse. They're left here. Had he started breathing again? Crawled out and gone back to Sadako's house? Was that it? Uh I come here to see the a tattoo or not. Well, you didn't didn't want to go to his house to verify or not, but I'm uh, you didn't, so. And yet the truth I unearthed was far more than that. The truth is stranger than fiction. And yesterday, what was I I killed him. I buried him. There was no doubt. But for some reason he lived and crawled back out. Oh boy. And that... That was impossible too. Oh, I'm so tired of hearing the word impossible over and over. I get it. I get it. Dead people don't like to play by the rules here in Hinamazawa. Then, I'll kill you as many times as I need to. I'll keep killing you until you never show your face to Sadako again. How are the police gonna take this? Oh, she and the others are muttering at each other. So I'm off the hook now. <laughs> Eventually, their conversation ended. No, she came towards me. So I'm, uh... Are you going to fucking apologize? <laughs> what did he want to say? What did he want to do? I stiffened, tensing up. And then Oishi just ignored me like I wasn't even there and passed right by me. There were me too, and they ignored me and shuffled away. Eventually, it was no longer a sign that anyone was around, and I returned to my quiet world of silhouettes. That's how you act to everyone here, then I'm like, no wonder the whole fucking town hates you. If you're playing nice those other routes. You were only playing nice the first installment, and I'm, uh, you're just trying to be completely like I'm, uh, all that for the second installment, all that. Yeah, have fun. 
The only one left there was me. And the sound of the pouring rain filled the silence. Not that's the end of that. Oh my god. Holy shit, that was a long thing. Oh my god, actually. Holy shit, that was only chapter 11. What the hell is happening? There's more? Inquiry request. Recruit of Malice. Achievement unlocked. Gone. Wait. You say this is the shortest chapter so far, but, like, there's so many more achievements. How much longer does this chapter go? Holy shit, actually. There's so many of those... Those tips and all that. Oh my god. Like, there's a, a third one. There's a third... There's literally a third page of these. There's a third page of these. Oh my god. Oh. Christ. Okay, first up. Inquiry request. Okinomiya Police Station Command Center Transmission Recording. June 20th, 8.08 p.m. Oh, nice. This is Okinomiya Police Station. We read you loud and clear. Oh, they're do it's, is this continuing off from uh, the fifth victim discovery? The fifth year discovery. Ooh. Oh, we'd like you to look up at the license plates brought. Shishibone H4344. Shishibone H4344. All right. Please give us a moment to look it up. Thank you. Number match. Shishibone H4344. Owner, blank. Address, blank. Hinamazawa Village, Shishibone. Why is the name crossed out? Vehicle make and model. Okay. Theft reports. None. Special mentions. Nothing of note. Okinomiya Security Police to Oishi. We found the license plate from earlier. Oishi, do you read? Oishi, please respond. Hmm? Am I getting a bad signal? Anyone know she's car? Please re... Nothing, huh? Oishi, someone want a license plate check? Whose car was it? Someone from the village. A completely average car. Who was it? If oishi is asking, then it can't be anyone good, right? The special mentions column is completely blank. No indication is related to the S-group either. Hmm. And no demerits on it. Is it connected to, like, a ma... Is it connected to Takano? Or, like, you know, ma Tomotaki? But, like, he has a bike, so... It doesn't make sense. <laughs> Maybe passed him on the road and he got mad. That guy isn't the type to forget a grudge. Even if he started the grudge? Okay. What was the point of that? That was an inquiry request for what car? That, okay, that's actually just completely ominous, honestly. Why a car? It's not related to anything, so, hmm. And also this one, completely black screen, record of malice. I'm assuming this is what Keishi is. He said it smelled. He said this food smelled. He said smell because I smelled. He said I smelled because I don't take baths. He said take a bath three times a day because I was a smelly person. He said to stay in the bath for a long time, every time. He must be possessed, he must be possessed by something too. Possessed? Oh. This is the same thing the man who died said. Why does he know what that man said before? That much is obvious. The same thing that possessed that man is now possessing him. Can a sudden earthquake make a big hole in front of the house? If it did, he would definitely go and look into it. And then I just have to push him in. I won't give in until I get that chance. I won't give in. I won't cry. I won't give in. I won't cry. Oh, someone is apologizing again. Okay, we literally just got two complete ominous tips. Okay. Okay, there's a lot to go through, but I'm uh, definitely, I think there's something completely fucking wrong with the coach. Honestly, I didn't trust him in the beginning, and, like, I just wanted to see, like, where it would go. Like, maybe he would keep it up? Like, he would actually, like, hide the crime, but actually it's a bit worse. He literally collabor collaborated with what Keiichi was saying, and then literally... What makes it worse is that I'm, uh, now I'm just wondering if he actually does not, like, if he does not believe anything the, uh, Keiichi says, then I'm, uh, why tell the police about, like, you know, where the, you know, the gravesite was or anything like that? Why... 
say that unless the unless you know Oishi and them were already there just looking around just looking for clues in the mountaintop if but that's the thing because Oishi was in made a call he made a call well it's from his car or anything like that but huh they definitely had to drive there and like suddenly just crept up on Keiichi which honestly that was a really cool image but coach Eerie that I'm uh if he didn't believe Keiichi at all why didn't why like say that's where my Keiichi was heading towards especially since now Lily collaborates like Keiichi's like you know like you know story of like he like killed you know like Sadako's uncle but there's no one there even his even the uncle is there there's a hole there and just in the sound of it I'm uh Oishi did not discover the open grave that's close by Sadako's, like, you know, house, anyway, that, or the shovel, even, right now. They haven't found it yet at all, so... That just proves that, like, you know, like, like, Keiichi wasn't exactly, like, you know, crazy. So, like, no matter what you think of it now, whether, like, Coach Iris, like, you know, whole goal thing was, I still making connections to the whole two doctors who, like, the, the quote-unquote doctor who came to him, uh... Who came to like you know Katie's house and you know take over and all that? And um, at the time, Katie didn't recognize them, and he definitely didn't recognize um uh, the different definitely didn't recognize Eerie when um uh, he was in the baseball game, never did, so that Lily could correspond to him as well. And whoever this director is, which Lily still is being elusive, at least in terms of that, probably all this will just be answered in the answer arc anyway. Hmm. Hmm. There's actually no way that I'm, uh, Tepe is still alive or all that, so what is even happening? The only thing you can think of is more supernatural elements, but the story is doing everything its damnedest to much show that like, there's nothing like back and forth, but how do you exactly come up with a more realistic outcome out of that based on exactly a mod? You know, Coach Ira is like Lily, like as mentioned before, just lying and acting, just talking through Keiichi to calm him down and does not believe a single word he said. It all makes sense. Like he was rationalizing and reasoning everything that Keiichi said out, but um, uh, he never. It's one of those things where like, is he literally just saying that like you know, Keiichi's like mentally unstable and is like trying to keep us keep him calm, like you know, like you know, um, uh, go into delusion a bit and like you know, just playing along with it. But then it wouldn't just, just doesn't make much sense. Like since Keiichi was completely calm and adamant about like saying like. Is there something weird going on? Please, is is there like just something wrong? Am I missing anything? Anything like that? And he did not, he did not reciprocate or like say any contradictions of anything that happened at all. At all. Honestly. So there's something fucked up, so there's just something fucked up with him. Honestly. There's nothing else to it. And I'm gonna imagine the next, like the like chapter 12, unless there's more after this, then I'm uh, chapter 12 is gonna be another hacking along of a doozy. Oh boy! So the coach is definitely gonna make a call, phone call to maybe like you know, um, uh, Katie's parents. Is oh god, actually, that's gonna be even worse than now his parents are getting involved with all this, and um, uh, with all the I guess the uh, the whole thing about um, uh, just um, uh, Katie just suddenly deciding to like kill someone, and his parents never even noticed, you know, his um. Uh, yeah, his growing bloodthirst against one person in particular, but probably never even heard about, like, you know, the uncle in the beginning. That's going to be a lot to take in for them. I'm assuming, like, the phone call is going to take place, and, um, uh, something is going to happen, like, with Sadako at the very end, like, where he's, like, going to try to, like, oh, God, he's actually still, no matter what, he's still going to try to, like, kill the uncle. Like, he said that he was complete against that, so he was set on it. So... Go Jerry's gonna make a phone call to parents. Um, he has to do with that. Run off. I'm um, uh try to go to Sadako's house and I'm um, uh kill the uncle and oh boy, how's the whole thing gonna go work for Ama um, uh, Sadako? Oh god, it's gonna be even worse. That is KT thinks is in full um uh, reciprocation mode just um uh if everyone was blaming me for this and I still didn't and I am being blamed for something I technically didn't do just yet, I'll make it happen, so then I'll be blamed for it rightfully so. It's like that mentality. Oh boy, that's gonna be how it is. Okay, that's how it's gonna be. And he's gonna try to see the dre like the tiger touch in the back on his on Tepe's back. I wonder if Tepe's actually gonna even like say if he was attacked at all. It's probably even worse if Tepe like says he was here the entire like he just left. 
and like him, uh, he just went into the bar or something like that and came back, or literally, he followed Keiichi's phone call and basically just said like, yeah, some people, someone was making a prank at the police station and all that, and I came back home. I can honestly, that would be like even more just mindfuckery, honestly. Plus, him, uh, if the uncle has no wounds, or if he does, he just easily explains and like doesn't say it with any hint of hostility to anyone. Then I'm, uh, I fell on my motorbike and and just you know I went back up, went to the police station, went back, and nothing else happened. And since there was rain and all that, all the blood was washed away. There's literally nothing. There's literally nothing for DNA or anything like that, unless the police decide to um, uh, try to look for DNA in the hole, but um, uh, it was raining again, and um, uh, they just left in a huff because um, uh, they um, uh, they thought um, uh, Keiichi was just suspicious, but um, uh, it's not clear of whether the, like, uh, Oshii and the police actually think like um, uh, Keiichi was actually doing a hobby in the middle of the woods now, or um, uh, they actually do think he's hiding something. Either way, they're pretty much, they just like want to get out of this hair. Also, Oishi, have fun, um, uh, if you can't prove anything that Keiichi did, um, uh, I, like, honestly, oh my god. Jesus. Like, he basically stoked a forest fire, even though, like, he had the right idea, but, like, oh my god. Just from after all of that, especially, like, exactly, like, just all the words that Keiichi said to Oishi, like, literally match up, I guess, like, the exact same demeanor someone had to him as someone who basically almost threatened you the first time they met you, and then you meet them again, and you do not want to meet them at all, ever. Ever. Honestly. It all lines up behaviorally, behaviorally wise there, unless Coach, like, literally phoned and told, told Oishi. That's literally the only deciding factor here. That's the only thing. And I guess we'll figure if my coach ever said anything about that to anyone, police, coach's parents, or anyone else. We'll find that out and more for next time. So, have a fun time watching as I am playing this. Hope to see you next time, the time that may be. And I all hope you fantastic day.